So how many different ways could the letters of the word math be rearranged to form a four-letter four code word? So we have four letters, and we can ask ourselves, how many choices do we have for the first letter? Well, we have four choices. How many choices do we have for the second letter? Now, we're rearranging the letters, so we can't use any letters twice, uh, and so there would be only be three choices for the second letter. How about for the third letter? Two choices, and then there's only one choice for the last letter because there's only one letter left. And so we'd end up with 24 different code words that we could create out of the letters of math. Now, notice that's different than saying use the letters from math and you can have repeats. If we could have repeats, we'd have 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, uh, or 4 to the 4th, uh, different, uh, c code words, and that'd be 256 different code words. Uh, we'd have a lot more if we allowed repeats, but here we're not allowing repeats. We end up with 24 possibilities. Now, this sort of computation is done so often that we come up with a shorthand notation for it called the factorial. Factorial. Uh, in general, the idea is that n factorial means that number times 1 less times 1 less times keep on going down, all the way down to, uh, until you get down to 1. So it's multiplying numbers in decreasing order, uh, until you get down to 1. So this is 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, let's look at another problem. How many ways can 5 different door prizes be distributed among 5 people? So we've got 5 people, uh, and we've got 5 different prizes. So how many choices are there for the first person? 5. How about for the second? 4, 3, 2, and 1, or in other words, 5 factorial. Uh, and if you can find the factorial button on your calculator, it'll make your life a little easier here than hitting multiplication, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But either way, we come up with 120 different ways, uh, to distribute those prizes. Now let's look at a slightly different one. Uh, charity event is attended by 25 people, and we're gonna give away 3 prizes, and they're different prizes. Um, no person receives more than one prize. How many different ways can we distribute these? So we only have 3 prizes, and the order does matter because, um, it matters who gets uh, the $100 prize versus who gets the $25 prize. So how many choices do we have for the first, um, prize, for the $100 prize? Well, there's 25 people, so there are 25 possibilities for that prize. How about for the second one, for the $25 prize? Well, there's no repeats, right? No person receives more than one prize, so there's only 24 people now. Uh, and for the last prize, for the $10 prize, there's 23 people. And so we end up with 13,800 different ways that these prizes uh, could be awarded. And you'll notice that this looks awfully similar to, um, our, our factorial that we were doing earlier, uh, but a, but a truncated, right? Where we don't go all the way down to 1. And it turns out that there is a nice way to represent this, which we'll look about, look at in a minute. Let's look at one more first, though. Eight sprinters have made it to the Olympic finals, 100 meters. How many different ways, uh, could the gold, silver, and bronze be awarded? Um, or how many different possible outcomes are there, basically? So, similar to the last problem, there are eight possibilities for the first place for the gold. There are seven possibilities for the, uh, for the silver. And there are six possibilities for the bronze. Uh, that gives us a total of 336 different, um, orderings, or 336 different outcomes.